it's time for your weekly horoscope for the coming seven days. And just a quick reminder for everybody out there, should you ever wish to get a session with me, all you need to do is go on ahead to my website. It's integrativemysticism.com, or of course, you may also simply follow those links down below. I've got a sale going on right now, 20% off all services, including gift certificates, and I'm also now accepting tips and donations, and your build a spread weeklies will be coming back. Okay, I'm just working on that. Uh, a lot of tweaks and things, but we'll be good. So what is going on when it comes to this week? How are things gonna be flowing for the Librans uh, this week? This week is all about, um, all <laughs> it, it feels like a lot of you are seeing uh, opportunities to kind of pivot or maybe even, be, even jump from a lot of commitments, a lot of bindings, or even a lot of stuck spaces that you've been in either voluntarily or maybe from external pressures, right? We talk about maybe uh, work obligations, paper pushing, family obligations, or again, things that maybe you thought you had to carry on yourself that you didn't feel through with, maybe stuff you're not over, uh, or maybe just, you know, projects or ideas or even relationships that you feel like you need to stick through that you don't. And the reason for that being is that you're arriving at your own checkpoint, and that's been a phrase that's been very, very, or, or a word, excuse me, that's been very strong uh, the, these last couple of weeks with the incoming waves, checkpoint, 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 uh, where we are getting a chance to do some serious uh, tweaks to a lot of works in progress, a lot of courses in progress. You've got the Seven of Pentacles upright as far as your uh, main theme of what is going on behind the scenes of all of your life. And the Seven of Pentacles is an interesting gift because we get not only a sample of the end result, but we are also getting a glimpse of not only the final outcome, but an alternative road, an alternative timeline, an alternative course we can make. When we look at the Seven of Pentacles card, we see the girl here clearly uh, waiting on the results of her potion that she is brewing. All of the ingredients are coming together and they are going to be, of course, creating a final outcome. But the point of her sitting there and watching is that she's paying attention to what all factors and ingredients that are actually going into this potion are going to be, uh, you know, doing to the final outcome, to the final piece. And so we're at a very, very cool uh, point where we can actually say, look, we don't think this belongs here anymore, time to get it out. Or we think we need to actually maybe get more of this in here, time to put this in. And you're going to be altering a lot of courses and a lot of futures that maybe you thought you were stuck with, right? Fate isn't set in stone. It's a tide. And what is, you know, and what, what you do with that tide or where you are when it comes in or goes out, that's where your free will allows you to create the, the reality that you want. So, you know, take that responsibility, accountability, and that's real empowerment. And, you know, you can make that work. In fact, with the um, Seven of Pentacles here, what I'm seeing is that a lot of you are going to be allocating your energies to maybe passions or ideals that will be the better substitutes for a lot of commitments that you've been holding, a lot of directions, a lot of uh, maybe a lot of processes or projects that have been taking too much of your time, energy, and resources so you can actually have maybe your cake now as opposed to wait for it later. And as we get on to your material concerns when it comes to your work, your finances, your home life, you know, your living situation rather, as well as uh, your personal abundance. We've got the Ten of Cups in reverse and we're actually seeing the end of an era taking place as it relates to maybe uh, an industry, a market, a fashion, a trend that we have been deeply connected to, maybe modeling a business after, or maybe this is what has been informing a lot of personal and economic decisions when it comes to the greater population of the organization you've been working for. But the Ten of Cups reverse is indicating while it is the beginning of the end for that era, that fashion, that trend, or that industry, as it is anyway, a lot of people don't seem to be acting like it is. A lot of people might be, whether they're unaware or just out of defiance or denial, uh, not wanting to actually acknowledge that there are some serious shifts coming, 
you have a chance to get ahead of this wave that is coming in. Now this could indicate a new role or a new job opening up that other people don't necessarily see the merit in right away until later. Or it may be you starting off in a completely new direction that could be considered cutting edge for now because a lot of people are kind of stuck in the past. We're at the change of an era anyway, a change of a decade. We talk about the sensibilities and aesthetics and the fashions and the markets of the 20 teens. Of course, trying to build a business or build a, you know, an economic or, or, or a platform of abundance um, you know, in, in according to the sentiments or the trends or the aesthetics of 2014, 2015, that's probably not necessarily very smart. You know, if you're trying to copycat people who are using things that made them successful in a bygone year, probably, you know, something your business or maybe your collaborators, your customers or clients need to really think more carefully about. This Ten of Cups reversed is saying that, you know, you're, you're getting a glimpse of what the final outcome is and it's not as great as it could be. So take the out that is coming for you. There is deliverance here. When it comes to your communications, we talk about friends, relatives, other people in your life. We've got the Two of Pentacles in reverse. And for your community card, I am seeing a big jump where we are actually dropping a certain community, dropping a certain group, dropping maybe a certain collection of friends or a part of, or maybe a segment of our family that has ultimately been maybe serving to keep us in one place. And sometimes we have to know when it's a smart idea to make that turn, make that shift, especially when you are growing out of it, when you're evolving out of it. Whether it's something that we were you know, that you've kept for a very long time, or maybe it's just that these folks are kind of stuck in the past. Maybe they're going in circles, especially when it comes to maybe your own academic or creative or spiritual process. You have to make the call and honor and own your progress and be true to your progress wherever it is going and wherever you are, however far you come. You don't try to uh, put yourself in a position where you're not and you don't keep yourself in a position where you're not anymore And this is going to make a big difference when it comes to your economic life as well I'm just seeing these interlinked for some reason as we get on to your challenge this week your lessons that may present as challenges We do have the six of swords upright very much in theme with what we've been talking about moving on getting over it deciding that indulging the rumination and reprocessing of a lot of situations that ultimately can't come back or are past their time, uh, this might not necessarily be your challenge. You might actually be in a space where it's like, look, I'm, I'm adjusted enough, I can do it. But you might not necessarily find that you're getting that reflected back to you, uh, maybe by people that you're surrounding yourself with. Some people... Uh, will be in a state of always healing, never healed, because they're not focusing on their own root issues or their own root challenges when it comes to maybe their health, their family, their love lives. You know, they're always focusing on the straw that broke the camel's back, but not the, <laughs> the pile of straws or the first straw that actually started the whole damn thing. You are in a space where you are needing to pay attention to where those vicious cycles might be getting reinforced by the environment around you. And with the Six of Swords, there is gonna be a chance to move on, right? Honor your own progress and own where you are in your own progress and growth, as opposed to maybe diminishing or slowing yourself down professionally, spiritually, creatively for folks that may be indulging the plateau experience or choosing to indulge the plateau experience. Because the Six of Swords is all about moving from unstable, unsafe, or unhealthy conditions to better spaces. But sometimes that means also getting back out there. As we get on to the uh, relationship card, we talk about love and romance. We talk about your, you know, your partners. We've got the King of Wands in reverse. And I am seeing there's going to be a point where you and a partner are going to be dropping something that maybe we've been just doing as a performance. Because with the King of Wands reversed, it's not really doing anything for anybody, whatever this is, whether this is an activity, 
could be something romantic, could be something intimate, or possibly something that we are uh, holding ourselves in, like a certain friendship, a certain schedule, a certain routine. But the King of Wands reverse is indicating it's not, you know, this really isn't bringing fulfillment or joy in anybody. We, it, we may have to share this information with a partner, you know, letting them know that it's not doing anything for us. You might have to also hear this information from your partner about something that you thought they liked really isn't doing anything for them. It's nothing personal, absolutely not. But with the King of Wands reversed, it's important that we honor this experience and so we can actually set ourselves free from, from doing something we thought we had to do, but we actually don't, right? We're not bound to that as a routine or commitment. For those of you who are currently single or those of you who are currently available to new people, the King of Wands reversed is indicating here that there is going to be a, a sudden awareness in a new person that uh, of an awareness of a new person that is trying on a completely different personality than who they really are in order to maybe get into a relationship you know that fake it till you make it crap and the thing is is that doesn't work when you're trying to connect true hearts in a true commitment and so there might be a point where you have to you know maybe give this person a bit of an understanding that they're actually better off being themselves than doing something performative or trying to fake their way into a love connection. Because when we do that, we set this person free to actually show you their true quality. And so just be mindful of that because sometimes it can be easy as well to kind of fall for the fake. And I don't see this as something that's meant to be like abusive or manipulative. It might be something that this person thinks they have to do to have their best chance when really the, the, the problem here is that it's totally inauthentic and they could have a better chance if they paid attention to what they could really bring to the table. So that's what I've got for you. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. You know I appreciate it. And should you ever want to get a session, go on ahead to my website. It's integrativemysticism.com.